DC Comics has been publishing Wonder Woman for over 76 years. Since 1941, William Marston's Amazon Princess has been defending humanity from evil gods, mythical beasts, supervillains, and yes, even intolerance. But would you believe that this all started from a simple magazine article by Olive Byrne? Now, we're all familiar with Seduction of the Innocent from uh, Frederick Wordham. This is uh, 1954, I think it is. But accusations that comic books were trying to create uh, juvenile delinquents was pretty much an argument that started ever since the beginning of the medium. Matter of fact, in 1945, Time Magazine even published an article called Are Comics Fascist? And that's at least 12 years before Frank Miller was born. Now, during this time, Olive Byrne was living in a uh, polynamorous relationship with uh, Dr. William Marston and his wife Elizabeth. At this point, it's, this is like uh, late 30s, early 40s, his reputation in the, the public eye had been kind of wrecked a little bit with his ongoing uh, legal battles. So he was actually between jobs quite a bit during this period, and it was up to Olive and Elizabeth to pay the rent. And of course, this being the early 20th century, finding uh, really high-paying jobs for women was somewhat difficult. They were both college graduates. Uh, Elizabeth was even a lawyer, gone to law school and everything, and they had quite a bit of trouble uh, for quite a while. They did find lucrative jobs in the uh, literary industry. They were both uh, writers for uh, Britannica, and Olive was writing magazine articles for Family Circle magazine. And this was aimed towards like thinking housewives and usual the the suburbs that were building up. And to kind of keep William Marston in the public eye and keep his presence known, she would often use him as an expert. It would also punch up her articles too. One day she decided to do a article about comic books, since people were talking about it. And in the interview, she asked him this question. Do you think these fantastic comics are good for children? By the way, for modern readers, for modern viewers, I have to uh, let you in on the fact that uh, fantastic was not always meant as a compliment back then. This is like me in modern content saying, oh, these fantastic stories about vaccinations causing autism. Do you believe this? That's kind of the context. Marston replied with this answer. Mostly yes. The two wishes behind Superman are certainly the most soundest of all. They are in fact our national aspiration of the moment to develop unbeatable national might and use this power when we get it to protect innocent peace-loving people from destructive ruthless evil. You don't think for a minute that it is wrong to imagine this fulfillment of these aspirations for the United States of America, do you? then why would it be wrong or harmful for children to imagine the same for themselves? Now, considering this was the early 1940s and America was in debate on whether or not it should enter World War II, you can guess that this basically hit a few people right on the nose. And one of those people was Charlie Gaines, who worked for All American Publications, which is, yes, that became DC Comics. He had brought on Dr. William Marston as a psychological consultant in order to kind of combat the accusations that comics were bad for people. He was there to say, no, it's really good for people. Soon he would actually join the editorial staff and pitch a female superhero of his own. Now, it was his thinking that male superheroes traditionally lacked a maternal love or tenderness. This new character would hate war, however, would fight to defend justice and protect the innocent. He put forth this kind of new breed of hero that didn't shy away from her uh, feminine qualities. Instead, they were sources of strength. And it was unclear if the idea of doing a female hero was uh, Marston's himself, or if it came from Elizabeth or Olive. Matter of fact, it's uh, their son, uh, Pete. He actually, in interviews, have claimed that it was originally Elizabeth's idea to do a uh, female hero. Although it isn't 
hard to believe that all three pretty much thought of the same thing at the same time. Oh, uh, it's definitely are you thinking what I'm thinking kind of situation. And in 1941, they were all set with artist H.G. Peter to debut Suprema, the Wonder Woman. Okay, they cut it down to Wonder Woman. Now, sadly, William Marston passed away in 1948, and his wife and Olive, they actually continued to live together for the rest of their lives, passing away in 1990 and 1993, respectively. They, however, got to see the effect Wonder Woman had on generations to come. Now, she obviously wasn't the first female superhero, but it's hard to argue that there were many characters, either female or male, that had such a lasting impression that she created. There are many characters today, and many real-life heroes, that owe a bit of thanks to her existence and inspiration. With the film that's come out this year, as well as the Rebirth relaunch, it's very obvious that the Amazon Princess is going to be continuing to fight for generations to come. Thanks, Olive. Push the button, Lindsay. Uh, uh.